Hello Grade Nines, welcome to today's MathSlit video lesson. I hope you guys are all well and in today we are continuing from the previous section where we collected, summarized and organized data onto representing the data. So if you remember from our data cycle, we started off with the problem, uh, a plan, collecting, organizing data representing the data, then lastly, analyzing the data. So the previous video was the collecting, organizing, and summarizing the data. That was step three. And we're moving on to step four, representing the data. So we need to represent the data in a way that's visually appealing, in a way that's easy to understand for the audience. And we're going to be looking at a number of ways to do this. Um, drawing graphs. We have two different types of graphs, the bar graph, the double bar graph, um, and a different type of graph. Um, it's called a histogram. That's for frequency tables. And then we're also going to look a little bit at pie charts. So I think in this video lesson, depending on how far we get, we'll just look at the first uh, three types of graphs. So we're going to start off by looking at the worked example on page 278 and there's three different, uh, sorry, two different graphs that we're going to be covering, the bar graph and the double bar graph. So we're going to start off with the bar graph and if you look at this table, we've got a column for sport. So these are different sports at a particular school, so not like Odyssey. Um, there's a number of learners, so there you can see there's quite a few learners, 80 to 100, also not like Odyssey. Um, and then we have a number of boys and the number of girls participating in each sport. So if we look at rugby, for example, you see that 80 boys participate and obviously zero girls participate. Well, not so much these days with gender equality, I'm sure. Um, some schools do have female rugby teams. Uh, similarly, for netball, there's uh, zero boys and 85 girls. Um, so I don't think uh, boys play netball. I think it's more basketball. Um, cricket, we have uh, 50 uh, boys playing and 30 girls playing. So that's uh, gender neutral. Uh, and for the other sports, swimming, soccer, and hockey, they have some boys and some girls, so it's also gender neutral. So the first um, question asks us to draw a bar graph representing the number of learners per sport. So this graph isn't asking for a division along the male or female lines. It's asking for total number of learners. So we're going to add um, the total learners per sport. So for rugby, it's going to be the 80 boys plus the zero goals gives us 80. For swimming, it's going to be the 30 goals, the 30 boys, sorry, plus the 90 goals, which gives us 120 learners. So we're going to add the number of students for each of the columns, and we're going to get a total, and we're going to represent that on a bar graph. So I've completed that um, addition over here. So for each sport, I've added together the number of girls and boys that participate. Um, so you can just double check these values. We've got for rugby, 80, netball, 85, cricket, 80, swimming, 120, soccer, 100, and hockey, 135. So now I'm going to plot this on a bar graph. So my vertical axis my dependent variable is the number of learners. So the number of learners depends on which sport we are looking at. And this axis will have type of sport. And then um, I'll go up, I think, in, in increments of 20. So we've got 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140. And if we look at rugby, we would have a bar here. We would write rugby. 
and we go up to 80, so it's 20, 40, 60, 80. And it would look something like this. So I'm just going to uh, take a picture of this information, rub this out and redraw it. So once again, to reiterate, my vertical axis is number of learners. Horizontal axis is type of sport. Let me actually draw it a little bit lower. Type of sport and um, the number of learners depends on the type of sport that's being played. So um, I'm just showing you how to draw it. I know it's already in the textbook, but it just gives you, because you'll be asked to draw graphs or interpret graphs or whatever the case may be. So this is just to show you the process. So we can see that the number of learners goes up to 135. So we would like to choose uh, in intervals so that we can capture from uh, 80 to 135. So I like using 20 as the interval because 20 is, uh, is like big enough. Um, I wouldn't want to use intervals like 5 for example because just for 100, if we had intervals of 5, we'd have a total of 20 intervals. Okay, so we don't want too much clutter when we're doing our axes. So I'm going to go up in 20s. So it's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 120, 140. So I'm just going to mark it. 100. So when I've marked 100, I don't have to mark all of the other intervals because we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, oops, 100 is here. So we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we know that 5 goes into 100 20 times. So each interval must be 20. So we've got 100, 120, 140. We don't have to put these two. We know already what the interval should be. Okay, so let's look at the first sport, um, rugby, that was 80, so we draw a graph, a bar like this. The next sport is netball, that's 85, netball 85, so um, halfway between 100 and uh, 80 is 90, and halfway between that is 85. So notice I'm doing this uh, very simply. I'm not even using a ruler or anything, because I'm not trying to get things perfect. I'm just trying to get an overall shape. And the shape will tell the audience uh, what's going on with the data. Okay, so then we've got swimming. With 120, so that goes all the way up here. Soccer with 100, oh I missed out cricket. Cricket is 80. So that's the same as rugby. Then we've got uh, swimming, 120, uh, soccer, 100. Hockey, 135. Okay, so in between 120 and 140 is 130. And then halfway between that will be 135. And so we get our bar graph. Now notice a couple of things here. I've drawn 
um, I've drawn spaces in between the bars. It's only for a histogram when the bars are allowed to touch. Okay, so look at the definition, the heading, bar graph, and uh, the bars are spaced apart. Now, if you find this a bit confusing, some people might see bars in between here or something, you can always just color them in to make them clear. Okay, so next we'll move on to the double bar graph. So there's nothing crazy going on here. Um, we don't have to freak out when you see the word double bar graph. Um, and I'll show you very easily how we plot this information. So the double bar graph applies when there are two different things for the same category. So for rugby, we have, uh, or sorry, for the categories type of sport, we have either boys or girls playing. So this doesn't hold for rugby, there's only boys playing, netball, there's only girls playing, but for cricket, there's uh, boys and girls. So all we do when we plot, let's do, let's do the one for cricket, is instead of a single bar, we have two bars. So we'll make uh, boys 50, so 20, 40, 60. So 50 is halfway between there, that can be for the boys, and then the girls can be to the right of that, 30 is there. So it goes 20, 40, so halfway between is 30. So that would be somewhere here. And then we can color them in to show the difference. So this colored one could be the boys, and the clear one, the girls. So I'm just going to do that for all the information in this table. Yo guys, so I'm taking a little bit of time here. Um, it might look really, really boring and laborious and you might be like, oh, but I can, we can see the graph, why is he redrawing it? Um, one of the reasons I'm doing it as well is to show you the relative speed that it takes to do these things. So you can see it's quite quick. It's like three, four minutes, okay? So there's no need to go crazy and get the measurements perfect on your ruler and stuff and take 15, 20 minutes to do something like this. Okay, so let's plot the double bar graph. I've taken a picture here. And once again, vertical axis is dependent variable. Number of learners depends on the type of sport. Okay, so we've got uh, rugby. So we just need a single bar here for 80. I think our highest goes up to 80. So I'm just going to go up in, I can go up in 20, so 20, 40, 60, 80. Okay, so once again, I only have to write the 80 because we can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 goes into 80 20 times and that tells us our intervals are each 20. So for rugby, we've got 80, so that's right at the top here. Okay, and the number of goals is zero, so we just leave a space and move on to the next sport, netball. So netball has 85 goals. So sorry, I'm gonna color this in for boys. Okay, netball has uh, no boys, so I'm gonna leave a space, and then the goals will be clear at uh, 85, oops. So this actually goes up to 100. So in between uh, 80 and 100 is 90, and in between that is 85. So sorry about that, a little bit messy, but also to show you the human error. So this bar will be clear because it's just goals. Okay, next on to the gender neutral sports, we've got cricket. And there are 50 boys and 30 goals. So it's 20, 40, halfway between is 50.
and 30 goals, so it's 20, 40, and halfway between is 30. Okay, swimming. There's 30 and 90. So 30 boys and 90 girls. Sure, that's a very big difference. So whenever we're plotting uh, data like this, we would see something like this and out like something crazy where there's such a big difference between boys and girls. And that might lead us to analyze further and to ask questions. Why are there so few boys uh, that are doing swimming? Maybe it's uh, one of those like jock schools where swimming is like a goal sport and, and no, none of the guys want to do it. Something like that. Okay, so then we've got soccer. We've got 60 boys. So it's 20, 40, 60. And 40 goals. Okay, so quite a few goals playing soccer. Here as well, we need, to, we need to think about something like the size of the teams. Okay, so a soccer team needs 11 players. So if you look at the goals, there's 40 players. So you might have um, an A and a B team. Um, for the older kids and an A and a B team for the younger kids. So lastly, we have hockey. So that has 60 boys and 75 goals. So 60, it's 20, 40, 60, so it's three of them. And now 75 is one of those tricky ones. Let's just go through it. So between 60 and 80 is 70, and between um, 70 and 80 is 75. So it's halfway there, and our last bar does something like this. Okay, so that concludes uh, this section. Let me just stand out the way. Um, so it's not the neatest of graphs, but it captures all the relevant information. So next, we're going to move on to the histogram. So for the histogram, we're going to look at the worked example at the bottom of page 279. So what is a histogram? A histogram is very similar to a bar graph, except that we're dealing with continuous data. So in the previous example, when we looked at number of learners, the number of learners is discrete. It's countable and you can't get fractions. So for example, you can't get that there are 42.7 learners doing swimming, okay? So the continuous data are things like height, weight, length. You can take on fractions. So for example, you could have a length of 55.7 uh, meters or a weight of 24.3 kilograms. So we'll look at this example and we'll see the way we uh, categorize and, and split up the continuous data. So let me just read the question. Um, so it's looking at uh, the length of fish okay, at uh, the Berg River um, and the type of fish is called the redfin. It's critically endangered. And conservationists did a study to determine the sizes of the fish still left in the rivers. Okay, so this would be important for conservationists because the size of the fish will indicate its maturity, whether they are babies or adults. Um, so, for example, if they found that there were many adults and very few babies, uh, they might think there's something wrong with the breeding. If they found uh, very small fish, uh, they might think that the adults are being fished out at too high a rate. Okay, but anyways, let's get on to the maths. So we have our interval lengths. Actually, let me just redraw this and I'll talk about it. So our interval lengths are given in this left-hand column 
and it's very easy to interpret. Uh, when you have this value x, it tells us uh, some value in the interval, and the interval lies between 90, 80 and 90. So this interval is 80 to 90 millimeters. Frequency tells us how many of the measurements fell into this interval. So it tells us that we got five measurements falling into this interval, and we can imagine some numbers, for example, if we got the measurement 81, uh, 82.7, 86.9, uh, 89, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 82. These could be the five measurements that fell between 80 and 90. Okay, if we got something like 93, that would fall into the next interval between 90 and 100. And so we go uh, filling in all the frequencies. Now, when we plot this, it's very simple. We plot it just like how we did the bar graph, except that the bars touch. Okay, the reason why the bars touch is that these intervals flow into one another. So we go 80 to 90, then 90 to 100, 100 to 110. So that's why our bars touch. The intervals are touching each other. So let's plot it. So the horizontal axis is going to be our length and the vertical axis is going to be our frequency. So in other words, frequency depends on the length. Okay, so let's put this down. Uh, length in millimeters and frequency. Okay. So our frequency is discrete. We can only count the fish one by one, but their lengths are continuous. That's why we need the histogram. So um, the frequency goes up to 50. So I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And our lengths go from 80 to 140. So I'm going to go um, 80 over here at the origin, then it will go 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140. And you can fill that in if you want, um, or you can just fill in the last one. I'll, I'll fill them all in, so we've got 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140. Okay, so I've drawn them next to each other and our bars are going to touch. So for 80 to 90, we have five. So remember each of these intervals is 10. So five is going to be midway. From 90 to 100, we have 20. So we go 10, 20. 100 to 110, we've got 30. 110 to 120, that's um, that's 40. So that's there. And then 120 to 130 is our maximum frequency at 50. And then 130 to 140 is 10. Okay, so we were able to uh, represent this quite nicely visually. Um, it tells us that, look, there's quite a few adult fish, okay, these bigger fish, there's quite a few of them, and there's very small numbers of babies. Okay, so that might be of interest to these conservationists. Maybe the babies are being hunted too quickly before they can reach maturity, something like that. So that concludes today's video lesson. I hope you guys understood, and I'm going to leave a couple of questions on this section I know it's been a bit of a long video, we're pushing now 25 minutes, uh, but it's really, really easy. Please uh, watch it. If you're watching it and you're tired, just skip forward, uh, but just get through all the information, make sure you understand. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.